to everyone. <laughs> You've already seen enough of me, so we're going to bring our stars out here right now. So up first, he plays Izzy Hands. He also known from the Batman and Chernobyl. Here is Con O'Neill. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, keep that going right now, taking the stage. You know him as Lucius. He's also the creator of the TV series Newark, Newark. Here is Nathan Fall. <laughs> One more time, let's hear it for the guys, everyone. It is... Oh, they are pumped. They are ready. So, Nathan, first off, I saw you a couple days ago say this was going to be your first time to Chicago. Is that right? Correct. And you were looking, looking for somewhere to get some drinks. Did you find that place yet? I did. I went out in, I went out in the Old Town last night. Is that fun? That's, like, fun, right? Um... Of course, I feel like I'm contractually obligated to be like, I didn't drink. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I had a really fun time. I saw some Second City shows. I'm, I'm obsessed with Chicago, and I think I want to live here. So good. Well, Chicago loves you, and welcome. And, and Khan, I know you were on Twitter last night. Something, you were trending. Did you ever, were you ever <laughs> able to find out no. what? What was going on? Were you able to get to the bottom of it? Are there any kids here? <laughs> I don't have a fucking clue why I was trending this night. I really don't. But um, I did keep threatening to take my top off yesterday. So. <laughs> and it's like some people are kind of just like willing to exploit their sexuality to trend on Twitter, and I just like. That's just like not for me. But you do what you gotta do, babe. Do you know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> hey, so Nathan, uh, I want you to real quick share your story of how you ended up on the show, because it's not the traditional route to being on a show. Uh, so please tell. For sure. I'm so sorry to anyone who's heard me say this a million times. I'm starting to feel, with this particular story of how I got cast on the show, I'm starting to feel like, you know, the Lady Gaga, like 100 people in a room, 99 people, like. <laughs> That's me with my casting story. So I wasn't, hi, I wasn't, um, <laughs> it's a fan, hi, hi. Um, I wasn't, um, <laughs> yeah, 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 as soon as I started talking. I wasn't an actor before I did this show. Like I am a comedy writer, that's what I do for a job. Like I write TV in the UK and I had no interest in acting because um, it just scared me. It just the, it didn't really appeal to me. And um, I started, making Twitter videos, so sad, so sad, so pathetic. <laughs> I started making like character comedy videos on Twitter, genuinely for my friends, because um, I had like 500 followers at the time. Yeah, I have 500 friends, sure. Um, <laughs> and I, uh, and they, a few of them went viral, not to brag. Um, <laughs> And Taika followed me on Twitter and he DM'd me and was like, hey man, like, you, I, I love your work. And I was like, of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was the bizarrest experience of my life. And I was like, cool, th um, th thanks. <laughs> um, and then like a year later, I got asked to audition for the show. But I, di I didn't have an acting agent or anything. I just had my writing agents, but they emailed me and were like, they want you to audition for this Our Flag show. And I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, I was like, I mean, I'll audition for it. And it was peak lockdown. I've truly never looked worse in my entire life. <laughs> I was like, drinking so much, just eating trash. I looked awful. I did this, like, grainy self-tape in my kitchen. Um, um, and my boyfriend helped me with it. And I, it was just, I, I mean, I thought I did a terrible job. But I sent it off. And two weeks later, I got the phone call that I got the part. So, yeah. <laughs> 
And since then, just a couple headlines about the show. Uh, the rom-com isn't dead, it's just wearing a pirate hat now. Yes! Our flag means death is the rom-com we didn't know we needed. Uh, Khan, can you just share a couple, we're gonna go to the audience questions right after this, but any thoughts about being on a show of this importance right now before we get to the audience questions? Um, you know, I've done a lot of shows and uh, because I really am that old. And, uh, <laughs> and when we were shooting this, it, it, it felt kind. And kind is an a underused word now, because we're not. <laughs> and um, I think that's why it's landed, because I think people embrace kindness. And I fucking rock leather pants. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Pull yourselves together. I'm joking, you don't have to. Well, we have a rowdy group, so we're gonna get right to the people. And we're gonna start out over on this side, so step us, tell us your name, and please ask a question. Wait, which side? Me or her? No, you right there, yes, hi. Oh. Yes. Okay, hi. <laughs> um, my name's Mariah, I'm from Michigan. Hi, Mariah. Um, hi. Hi, both. Um, my question is actually for Khan. Um, do you think Izzy... <laughs> no, no, that's fine, that's Sorry, fine. Sorry, Nathan, I love you. No, don't um, worry about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Do you think Izzy is in love with Blackbeard, and did you have that in mind when you were playing the role? And secondly, do you think that Izzy sees Blackbeard and Ed as two sort of distinct personalities or people? Damn, <laughs> I'll take this one. Um, <laughs> um, I'll just take my top off. <laughs> um, I... I think, I don't think Izzy has the emotional maturity to yeah. identify love. Yeah. Um, he obviously fancies the pants off Edward, because who wouldn't? Yeah. Um, but because of the nature of our ship and the fluidity of the sexuality in our ship, I don't think it, I don't think it ever occurs to Izzy that he's in love. Um, when, I, when I was a kid, when I was about seven or eight, we, we used to holiday in this um, campsite in Wales. Camp as in tents, not as in... Um, uh, and uh, my brothers, who were older than me, were the cool kids, and I was the awkward kid, and um, I had one mate called Stuart. And one day, my brothers descended on Stuart and took him away to join their gang. Thank you. <laughs> and, and Stuart's here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's how Izzy feels about Blackbeard. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mariah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mariah. <laughs> hey, we're going to head over this way now. By the way, if this next question's for Con, I'm gonna flip out. Okay. It is not, it is for both of you. God. Hi, I'm Caitlin, I am from Nebraska. So. I remember you from yesterday, yes. hi. Yes, hi. Um, so my question is, hypothetically, and in a world where Lucius is alive, <laughs> <laughs> hashtag justice for Lucius. Um, if there were a musical episode, what song would you want your character to sing? And what would be the context? And sing it. This is the greatest question I've ever been asked. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much and God bless. Okay, so you know what I would love to see from Lucius is a rendition of Somewhere That's Green from Little Shop of Horrors. Yes! 
Black P, obviously, as the, as the Seymour. I just want to wear that outfit, you know? I want to wear that little apron. Um, either that or, like, don't rain on my parade or something. Okay. Um, I... Uh, w w my first day on this gig, I, um, I hadn't met Tyker. And uh, even at the read-throughs, Tyker's camera wasn't working on because we did a Zoom read-through. So I, all I'd, I'd heard Tyker, <laughs> but I'd never met him or seen him as, as, as Blackbeard. And um, I was in the makeup trailer on my first day, absolutely shitting it. <laughs> and um, Tyker walks in and he says, uh, I see Izzy and, and Blackbeard a bit like Judas and Jesus and Jesus Christ Superstar. Yes! Right. So I went, in my head, I'd like to say, I went, yeah, that's a really good idea and I think that's really profound. What I actually said was, <laughs> and then God love him, and this is the kind of kind man he is. He then played Jesus Christ Superstar for the next two hours as we were doing our makeup. And we sang along at the tops of our voices, and then we went in and we started working together, and it was a great introduction. So our working relationship has quite a musical theme to it anyway. Wow. I think anything Izzy would ever sing would have to be tragic. And I would kind of lean towards a Freddie Mercury who wants to live forever type. Yeah. Um, yeah, good question though. Thank yeah. you. Also, Gorgeous question. also, happy early birthday. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, heading over this way. Oh my. Hi, my name is Tess. I'm from Indianapolis. Hi, Hi. Tess. Hello. Um, and my question's for the both of you. Um, I really like the cameo with Will Arnett as Calico Jack. And so I was wondering if we can expect any more historical pirate cameos, or if you have any actors you'd love to see make a guest appearance on the show? I mean, the, the, I mean, those cameos in the first season were sort of amazing and beyond my wildest dreams. Like, I'm such a, like, comedy nerd, so to, you know, to have, like, Nick Kroll and Kirsten Schall, and just, it, I mean, it was just, I mean, to be on set with Fred Armisen, like, I felt... <laughs> I truly felt like I was like gonna pass out. Do you know what I mean? It was like he walks onto set as the most like normal guy in the world, and my ears were like, Bee! I was like nose bleeding. Like, <laughs> like I was so so. It was like the. Um, I mean, there are a million actors that I, you know, love to work with. I wanna I wanna get some like some of those uh, SNL ladies. More of those on the show, you know. That I, I mean, working, I mean, Leslie Jones, ladies, like, fucking Spanish Jackie. But if we could, if, you know, if we could see some, maybe some Amy Poehler, some Maya Rudolph. Yeah, uh, yeah that would be, that would be a, a, a dream. Come. Um, yeah. It's, yeah I, it, the, the nature of our show and how our show works is it, um, y you are gobsmacked for two minutes, because that's all you're allowed, and then you, hit, you have to hit the ground running. I mean, I was gobsmacked with Will Arnett, and I wasn't even in that episode. <laughs> um, I, I mean, listen, I'm a huge fan of American comic actors. I think they're the best in the world. And if Tina Fey even knew we existed, that would be enough <laughs> for me. I would, I'd, I'd cease to exist. I'd cease <laughs> to exist. My head would roll off my shoulders. When I mean. So if anyone wants to see that, just Tina, give Tina if you're out there. Call. Tina. Oh my God, I would die. Thank you. Thank you. Great question. Thank you. Hey, over this way. Hi, I'm Allie, and I'm from Illinois, and. Um, my question actually relates to something you already brought up, um, because yesterday Khan had told someone he didn't think Izzy was emotionally mature enough for a healthy relationship. And my question was, is to both of you, who would you think on the ship would um, mentor Izzy 
from a younger person, you know, uh, as their gay, gay or queer mentor. <laughs> Yeah, con. Who? In your fucking dreams. <laughs> I have to say, though, just as a um, watching the relationship between um, Samson and Vico uh, grow is beautiful work from both of them. Yeah. And, 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 um, Nathan and Matt, you know, I think the relationships are already established. Uh, they're slow burning, are uh, uh, exquisite. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to say I don't think Izzy will ever be able to have a relationship. I just don't think he thinks in those terms, and he's he's not somebody who feels incomplete. His work is everything to him. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I think he'd be a really good shag, though. This is why I've never done a Comic Con before. <laughs> and we'll never do another one. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely waiting for someone to just like tap us on the shoulder and be like, okay, so you guys are done, we're gonna take you <laughs> off. Like, immediately into the back of like a police car or something. <laughs> Thank you so much. Great job. Great question. Hi. Hi, um, my name is Michelle. I'm from Michigan, I live here. You kind of just answered this question, Khan, but what's something about your characters that you know that isn't from the script? Some kind of acting decision that you put into your performance that you're kind of proud of? Wow, great question. <laughs> he wants to be better. <laughs> he just doesn't know how to be better. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Welcome. I'm not following that, by the way. Sorry. Just if anyone was expecting, I'm not. I'm not going to do it. Hi, guys. I'm Laura. I'm from the suburbs, so 20 minutes away. Um, we've heard some about like improv on the show and like room to explore, and I'm wondering where Ooh Daddy came from. <laughs> Okay, the Ooh Daddy story. Uh, we were shooting the scene. The line wasn't written, but the intent of the line was written. I'm not a great improviser. I, I, uh, Nathan and some of the other cast are brilliant at it. I, I'm a script guy. I'm, I'm always, I work for my script. I'm quite, can I say I'm quite anal about that? <laughs> um, so I'm quite anal about that, but this, this scene was happening and um, they just kept the camera fucking rolling. <laughs> and I was having to improvise and then um, I heard myself say, oh, <laughs> daddy, <laughs> oh. I've got to go, but um, <laughs> this was so fun, you guys. Seriously, like, like honestly, love you, mean it. Like you're amazing. And um, that was it. <laughs> and I had no idea that it would land the way it landed. <laughs> and it's one of the things I'm most proud of. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You. Hey, going over this way. Hi, my name's Nicole. Um, I'm from I love your outfit. Thank you. <laughs> it, it was it was last minute because you guys announced it last week, so this is from the thrift store. <laughs> Bitch, you look great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, my question.
question is this. So um, I heard that part of the audition process was coming up with backstories for your characters. So could you tell us about those backstories and did you have those backstories in mind um, when acting during season, season one? Yeah, so we had to, for anyone who doesn't know, like part of the audition process in our audition tapes, we got like an improv prompt, which was like, I was like, why did you, did you have to do this? No, I, it was like, <laughs> <laughs> he's sort of offer only. Okay, well, I had, and I also had to tap dance and strip, and no, um, we had to, we, we did this, like, it was like, why did you leave your family to become a pirate? Um, and we just had to, like, improvise around that for, like, a minute, as well as doing, like, scenes and stuff on the show. Um, I, I, I can't remember what I said. I mean, it was absolute nonsense what I said in the tape. It was something about, like, and this isn't, like, canon, but, like, it was something to do with, like, him being the, Lucius was the son of the village idiot, or something like that, and, like... <laughs> And like he left, he, he felt stifled and left or something like that. But I did eventually come up with like a full backstory for the character. I do have like a fully fleshed out backstory for Lucius that I will never share. Because um, it's so, it's really sad. <laughs> um, and because, I, I mean, I've said, this bef I've said this before in interviews, it's like pirates generally, well, look, pirates were outcasts of society and then the crew of the revenge are like, shitty pirates so it's like we're the outcasts of the outcasts so it's like in order to get to that place you've got to have made some pretty terrible decisions in your life so um in order to like because lucius is like smart and he can read and write and stuff so i was like well in order to like justify this for myself i've got to work out how he's ended up how this like quite like yeah. s smart switched on guy has ended up in this position and i came up with it and it's harrowing no it's just it's just <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I won't say it publicly because <laughs> then I get worried that the writing will like contradict it one day or something. You know, like I don't know. Like. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Come on, my own. Okay, um, I didn't because I'm, I'm Izzy isn't in the pilot, so my audition process was different to Nathan's. Nathan's. Um, uh, so I was just sent some scenes from episodes yet to be written, and. Uh, David Jenkins and his team and his writers are phenomenal writers. <laughs> and the, the joy of being uh, as old as I am and as short as I am, what the fuck is the short thing? <laughs> um, I'm five foot seven and a half in heels. Me too. So, um, the joy kind of when we stand next to each other and yeah. people realize what a kind of man mountain I am yeah. and what a kind of little pipsqueak this one is. Yeah. Man mountain. <laughs> so um, the, the writing was so specific that I, I had a pretty good handle on who Izzy was just from those scenes. And, uh, and then working with Taika, especially with Taika, uh, just brought whole other levels to that relationship that that I just loved working on and um, we never talked about it we just got on with it but it was I always felt um, brave doing the scenes with Tiger um, yeah thank, thank you, so you. Much. I love you guys thank you Hello, tell us your name and your question. Hi, my name is Emily. I drove up here this morning from South Bend, Indiana. How far is that, Emily? Uh, like an hour and a half. Oh, sure, sorry. especially at 7 a.m. on a Sunday. Well, thank you for getting up so early. No. Um, so my question for you guys, I know the filming process seemed pretty long and intense, and during that time, did you guys as a crew have any like bits or inside jokes that you would bring up to kind of help keep everyone sane? Um, we really didn't, did we? No, none of us were friends. No, no. Oh. Um, yeah. I didn't know Nathan was in the show. <laughs> I was kind of a competition when I won a competition off the back of um, a Doritos bag <laughs> to be in the show, and part of Con's contract was that he never had to interact with yeah. me. Um, no. Uh, yeah, I mean, we had. I mean, it was a lot of fun, and there is a lot of like the thing that you people don't tell you about filming like a big TV show is that you just spend most of your time sitting around. Like yeah. your day, your day is about like twenty percent acting, and then eighty percent just like eating snacks. <laughs> um, so, so or at least it was for me. Um, <laughs> But, uh, oh, my favorite, my favorite bit actually was, so Nat Faxon, who plays the Swede in the show, who's an angel. 
give it up for the Swede. Oh, he's so good. Um, he, uh, at my favorite bit, and actually you've now copped it, this is now your bit, is that um, he just always wanted to take his shirt off. <laughs> so like, he would like go up to the, it became like a running bit that we would like dare him to do, like before takes and stuff, to go up to the writers and really earnestly be like, I should probably take my shirt off for this scene, right? Because he like, he has a great body, <laughs> so like, and he loved to take his shirt off. So that was my favorite thing, was to try and get Nat topless in the back of every single scene. We'd love to see it, we'd love to see it. And that was for a joke and not for my own gain. <laughs> Man Mountain. Hey, thank you for coming up today, All right? Yeah, hi, go ahead over here. Hi guys, welcome to Chicago. I'm Christy, I'm a local high school librarian and I have a more- Hey Christy! Hey. Yes, Matt! Let's hear it for yes. Christy! Yes, Power man. to librarians, <laughs> come on! Yes. Well, thank you for the encouragement because I have a more serious question. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> no, in the United States, there's been a lot of politicians and parents have been really challenging LGBTQ rights and we're starting to see it in the suburbs with um, books being challenged, especially for LGBTQ material. And so I have a question for Nathan. Do you have any words of encouragement or advice for those that are working with teens to help support them and make them feel loved? I mean, we know we're doing all our can, but it's really hard when you get politicians and parents challenging everything that you're doing in a school. Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm so, I don't want to sit up here and kind of, <laughs> kind of slag off America, but you know, it's, it is, it's really. <laughs> We don't care. We don't care. It is, it is, I can, I can only imagine, my heart really does genuinely go out to every like queer person living in this country because it's so genuinely frightening what's happening for queer and trans people here. Um, and, and the UK doesn't have a spotless record, but the difference is that it's not as like baked into legislation and you know, it's, it's, we're, we're getting there. Um, but I, it's tough. I used to work, I used to do like youth work with queer and trans youth like in London and, um, and those kids were so, uh, um, and it, it wasn't always easy, you know, we had to like hold space for these kids where it was like, you know, maybe it was two hours a week that they got to be called by their real, their name and they got, they, mm. they got to use the pronouns that they wanted to use because they don't, can't use them at home or whatever. Um, and I mean, all, all we can do right now is like hold space for those people and um, do what we can. We need to fucking, if you've got the money, give away your money. Like, yeah. I, like you know, and, uh, and, and the fact that people can see themselves reflected in media like Our Flag is like, and, and the myriad other queer shows on TV is so exciting. So it's amazing that people can like, you know, see their own experience reflected back at them. Like, I think that does more good than people will ever realize, you know? Um, but we've just gotta, we've gotta keep fucking fighting, I think. Thank you so much for can what I, you do. Can I just say on this, um, these people who are causing these problems, that they never went away. Yeah. They've been doing press ups in the dark and now their time has come again. Fuck them. We've beaten them before, we will beat them again. And I promise you, you have more allies than you think. We outnumber them. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much for being here and for what you do. Hi, over this way. Hello, hi, my name is Eli, and I'm really happy I have to follow that real serious ass question. <laughs> Dressed as a sandwich, hi, hello. It's perfect, it's absolutely perfect. Thank you, I'm the, do you know, I'm the Nathan Lucius Birch from yesterday. Hi, oh babe. my God, that's you? That's, I that's did not me. recognize hi, you, oh my God. Hi, yeah, I have normal skin color. Bitch, that, the, that outfit, oh, I did my so human good. drag today. I'll post a picture to. of it, it's too good. <laughs> Uh, but first I wanted to give a shout out, if you guys can maybe say like a thank you to my friend V who helped me get here and who's been like a blessing to me, if you guys could just say like thank v, you. V, we love you bitch! <laughs> v, and also, me and Man Mountain love you. <laughs> <laughs> the Mountain Man. And I wanted to know, 
what can we all do? Can we campaign? Can we letter write to get bloopers? What can we do? Who do we call? Who do I write to? What do, I, what do we have to do? All oh, right. The bloopers, I'm, I'm, the I'm not, I thought you said loopers, and I thought you were doing something with Lucia, so I was like, yep, 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 yep. I was like, wait, <laughs> I was like, uh-huh. Uh, are we loopers now, Lucia's fans? <laughs> loopers. Bloopers. I, you know what? It's literally just all of us saying fuck a lot. Uh, it's, yeah. <laughs> me like forgetting my lines I guess I know yeah. you know what I was actually I was asked about this in an interview yesterday and like nice. I think genuinely I don't want to burst because I love blooper reels like I watch them all the time but like we were we were a fairly well behaved set in that regard because the show is so big like it's such a massive machine of a show so there was I mean I felt personally like it wasn't really like everyone just goofing off all the time and ruining takes because it was like there are hundreds of people working on the show and they've all been on their feet for like hours and hours and hours and like the idea that we're all just like <laughs> like farting around and making each other laugh is like, you know, you want to be like a bit more respectful than that. Apart from, I will say, um, Samson Kao laughs constantly. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe they could cook together just Samson laughing in every scene. Yeah. <laughs> Samson has been so good at bringing the behind the scenes anyway, so he's been doing his part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks, so. Thank you. Hey guys, real quick, we're about halfway through our time, so we won't have anyone else stand up for questions, and we'll try to do these in about a minute apiece so we yeah, can get sorry, through as I'm many as we can. So, uh, heading over this way, hi. Hi, my name's Mel, uh, and seeing Samba's Instagram, uh, Instagram con, you did your own sword uh, fighting and stunts. How, what was that like? Was it a lot of s historical stuff or stage play stuff? Um, yeah, I arrived uh, on my first day in LA and went to a stunt call there and then, and walked through the door and Steve, our stunt organizer said, you know Izzy is meant to be the best swordsman in the world. <laughs> and I went, well I've never picked up a sword, so <laughs> we're fucked. <laughs> um, and every day, um, a couple of hours a day, we worked on just basic swordsmanship. The producers hadn't decided on which weapon we'd be using, saber, foil, or, or the other one. Thank you. Um, so we were working on the technique of all of those weapons, and uh, then we got the choreography. And uh, it, it, I loved, I loved doing it. It was hard work because uh, you're using muscles you don't normally use, apart from Man Mountain here. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but I loved, I loved doing it. We had a great uh, stunt team on this, great stunt team, um, and I, you know. If I could do any other job in the world, it would be a stuntman. Um, but I'm too fat and weak. Also, it's just so funny, like, it couldn't highlight the sharp contrast between me and Con more. Like, Con worked so hard on that sword fighting and it looks amazing. Lucius had to, like, fall over at one point, and I was like, we probably need a stunt double, right? Like, <laughs> so, so pathetic. And that, that sword fight took the entire day. Yeah, it was a long day. I was and yeah. Hey, thank you so oh, much. Thank you. Hi, step right up. Hi, I'm Valentine. I'm from Illinois. Um, so Hi. you and, uh, sorry, Nathan and Khan, you both have, both your characters have lost both a toe and a finger. Do you think yeah. your characters could bond over that? And then also, <laughs> also for Khan, what was it like filming the infamous toe eating scene? Oh, I wasn't there for that. What was that like? Um, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> on take 34, <laughs> when you hear the toenail crunch again, I started to feel a little bit sick. Um, yeah, it, it, it's a great scene. And nobody was more surprised when I read it. Because um, I was going, oh. I'm gonna have to limp now. <laughs> um, but it's those extremes in the writing that you just go, this, we inhabit this world. And you're reminded of the world you inhabit by moments like that. And Nathan having his, Lucius having his finger just chopped off. It, the, what I love about this show is all the cruelty is aimed away from 
the sexuality or the gender of the people. So there's no violence directed towards queer people because they're queer. And it never occurred to me till I watched it that that's where we are with this show. And uh, it's about fucking time. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you. for hanging out with us. Hi, step on up here. Hi, um, my name is Chippy and I'm from Vermont. Hi, Chippy. Hi, Hi great name. Congrats <laughs> Thank you. on that. Thank you. Um, so I was wondering, um, what was your favorite unexpected moment on set, whether it was something somebody improvised or something that just went wrong? Mm, I, I've, I've got to say, one of the, the moment that I felt like I relaxed on the show because I was so nervous filming the show. I felt I felt so kind of deer in headlights the like for the first couple of weeks, and then the first scene uh, with uh, Matt with Lucius and Black Pete, where they're behind the barrel and and <laughs> Izzy comes and tells us off. That I remember that was like the first time that I felt like my like shoulders relaxed. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And and. I felt it, something really clicked with me and Matt. I just, I love him so dearly. And he's so, so and he was so kind to me in like helping me through. He's so experienced and, and he was such an amazing scene partner. I'm in that scene as well. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, you were. Da you daddy, were. Da daddy. You were. Daddy. And you're so good in it. <laughs> Can I have my moment please? Um, but yes, I remember that scene feeling very special to me because I was like, oh, I know what I'm doing. I did a bit of improv in that scene. I felt good about it. Like, and also it was like the beginning of m mine and Matt's like, like our romantic arc on the show. And that I just, I'm so proud of that arc and I loved doing it. And it's so cool as like a gay actor to just play like an uncomplicated love story, you know, like. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that. There was a scene where Lucius and Izzy almost kissed. <laughs> and that was a, a scene that we played out in a different way and that's the one you saw, but it was a scene that the director wanted to go that way for a while and we did a few takes. And I'll always remember that because A, it felt very possible, which was a surprise to me, and B, the lust in Man Mountain's eyes <laughs> as, as he gazed upon me uh, was, was kind of hot. <laughs> so yeah, I remember that. I'm a really good actor. <laughs> Not that good. <laughs> Thank you, Chippy. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi. Hi, I'm um, Maggie. I'm from Northern Indiana, Plymouth. Hi. Hi. Um, so my question's for both of you, and it's um, one of the most relatable themes of the show is that of found family. And we've seen all the interaction on social media between so much of the cast and crew that shows how supportive you all are while simultaneously knocking each other down a peg in a way that only family can. So I was just curious if you've experienced similar dynamics on previous projects or if that's something that's unique to our flag. I mean, there's definitely an element, when you're like thrown together in that like intense environment shooting a show that, you know, you definitely end up creating quite intense bonds, particularly for so many of us were so far from home. And it was during COVID as well. So, um, it was when the like travel ban was still on. So no one could come and visit. None of us had any visitors. So it was quite, a, and LA is quite a lonely city. So it was like, it was quite a lonely time. So it did kind of facilitate that like family bond. Um, yeah, I mean, it was it was really really special, and that found family thing. I mean, I'm just like chosen. I'm so obsessed with that. I think that's what makes all the best TV shows. Do you know what I mean? Like the best comedies as well. Things like Community and Parks and Rec and whatever. Like those Woo! those shows that like are about a group of people brought together by like a force outside of themselves, and they end up like being closer than they ever thought possible. Yeah, I just I I love that. Yeah. Come. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you, what's interesting about our show is um, I, I remember on our first day when we were doing our boot camp type day and I was looking at this rag 
muffin group of actors, and my first thought was, we haven't got a single ab between <laughs> us. <laughs> and, and for an LA show, that's pretty out there. Um, and there is a sense of, because we are all playing social orphans to a degree, uh, the community within the show was quick and quite profound. And um, it wasn't that we all instantaneously became bezies, but it just, there was a link to us all that you can see in the show. It's inherent in what, in the, what the show does. Um, so, yeah. Um, it, it just happened. Because they cast it right. Maggie, thank you for being here, Maggie. Hi. Hi, Hi guys. Uh, my name is Annie. Uh, everyone's question has been so good. Mine is very stupid. Um, I love it. The stupid of the better. So, um, I'm a barista at Starbucks. So, thank you. Um, if Starbucks had existed back then, what do you think your character would have got at Starbucks? I got it. <laughs> Double espresso. <laughs> With a shot. Not a frappuccino? Of Irish whiskey. <laughs> And a toe. Mm. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess a pink drink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an Americano girly in real life. Um, I have a quite simple taste, but I think Lucius, you know, if he was feeling his fantasy, he'd like, yeah, a little, little frothy, little girly number. You know? Cappuccino. <laughs> Thank you, Annie. Hi. Hi, my name is Julie. I'm from California. Hi, Julie. Hi, you. Hi. Hi. Um, for both of you, so um, the have you ever been sketched scene. <laughs> the second one with Lucius and Izzy. You've addressed some of this, but maybe you could say more. I know you've seen the fan art of Lucius and Izzy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Based on the pose that you two did together yesterday. Is there some tension between Lucius and Izzy? And you know what I mean by tension. <laughs> I'll leave this one to you. <laughs> Close your eyes. <laughs> In his dreams. <laughs> yes, there is. Yeah, there is. It's, um, he's, uh, Izzy is quite, there's two people I think that Izzy is bamboozled by, and that's Lucius and Jim. And I think he's a little bit frightened of Jim. <laughs> and he's confused as fuck about, his, about Lucius. <laughs> so, yeah, there's tension there, yeah. Yeah. Hey, thanks for being here. Hey, step right up. Hi. Oh, wow, that's my face. Okay. Hello. Uh, <laughs> First of all, I love the show. Uh, I haven't shut up about it for five months and annoyed all of my friends Fine. and family. Um, I was wondering, this is obviously a period piece, not a particularly historically accurate one, but- I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, he says, sipping his frappuccino. Characters from the past has affected your perception of today's culture and what they have in common? Wow. I mean, it was... It, it was actually very fun. They, they made it very clear from the beginning. They were like, this, it, we're kind of doing a period piece, but it's also like, we're kind of winking at the whole thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, particularly for, for me, you know, I, it, never at any point where they're like... I mean, I'm so modern in the show, and that was like, and they, they wanted that, you know, and if I ever, I think at the very beginning in the first couple of episodes, I was like trying to do a little bit more of like a poised, like kind of like drama school-y kind of yeah. period thing. Um, and then they were like, you know, 
<laughs> so funny. And then they were like, you know, you can just be like a stupid bitch if you want. Like, you can just do whatever you want. Um, I honestly thought he was constipated for the first two episodes. <laughs> That's what you were doing? Brilliant. Uh, but yeah, yeah. What about you? Well, having spent 17 years at the RADA. <laughs> um, no. You just never graduated. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was the caretaker. Um, I, 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 I think, although it's a period piece, it's, it's contemporary in its feel. And um, I, I think you, you, could get your, in, you can get in your own way if you start to try to address that and the contemporary side of the writing. So I think we just went for it and let the leather pants talk for themselves. Thank you, it's lovely to meet Thank you. you. Thank you. Hi. Hi, uh, so I'm Mar, I'm from Illinois, and nice to see Hi, you Mar. again. Hi, <laughs> Mar. Uh, so one of my absolute dreams uh, would be if the crew of The Revenge established a drag family. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Miss Feeney of the House Revenge. Uh, so I'm wondering, uh, what would Lucius and Izzy's drag names be? Uh, hmm, such a good question. Well, how about, okay, oh, I've got one. Okay, well, we all know, I, I've said it in an interview before, but my drag name is Genius. My actual, like, what I would do is, for me, which is Pat Down, which I think is so good. Um, <laughs> I, what about for Lucius, Miss Ingfinger? <laughs> I'm, I'm a comedy writer, so it's going on. And I'm not. So, and I don't think Izzy's got the vernacular to be able to come up with something. So I would say his drag name for now, ask me in Seattle and I'll have some time to think about it, would be Miss Rapier Wit. I, I was just, I was gonna pitch Izzy with a question. <laughs> That's a really good question. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, so we're going to try to go into the speed round because we've got to get a, about 10 minutes left. So fire away quickly and we'll, we'll answer as quickly. many as we right. can. Well, my actual question is... You're up. Hi. Hello. Uh, I'm Dominic. Uh, Hi, Dominic. First of all, five foot seven is a perfectly acceptable height for a man. Isn't it? Um, <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to ask, like, when you got it on your feet as opposed to having it in the script, was there anything that surprised you about your character arc and or lack thereof, if you feel like that happened? I, I really loved, as we keep talking about the kind of like Izzy Lucius relationship, like it was really, Lucius kind of starts off as this kind of, he's sort of like nervous and sort of bumbling and whatever. And it was so fun to get to see the more like dark, um, kind of manipulative <laughs> side of him. Like that was so fun to play and really unexpected. I remember getting that script through and I was like, fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then for me, it was a sexual undercurrent. It's, it's, it took me <laughs> by surprise how sexual it is. Without, without being gratuitous or without being, you know, everyone getting the tops off. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, there's a real sexual undercurrent, which I love, especially in comedy. It's also not a joke as no, well, yeah. which is cool, yeah. you know? That's yeah. cool, like the fact that we all just get to be like, like men just get to be horny for yeah. each other and it's not like, yeah. wah, wah, like, you know, yeah. it's just fun. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I think it's hot. <laughs> Yikes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, step up. Hi, um, so my first question uh, is for Khan. Um, how does it feel to be Harry Styles? <laughs> He's shorter than I thought. <laughs> And hairier. <laughs> I'm more hairy styles. <laughs> Come on! Yeah, Come on! <laughs> okay. Okay. Next question. 
next question. Um, my actual question uh, is, what has been your favorite um, fan interaction since the show aired? I love the, the art. I think the art is phenomenal. It is, um, you know, I got myself into trouble by reposting some of it, but, you know, fuck them. It's beautiful art, and um, thank you for doing it. Um, I really love, this is specific, but I get tweeted by, like, trans guys a lot, telling me that they, um, like, want to look like Lucius, which is so fucking cool. Um, I love that. And also, they tell me that they, like, like, oh, I'm jealous, I wish, and then I go on their pages and they're always like, so hot and cool. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm sure, I'll take it. You know, that's cool. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Hi, go ahead. Oh, I'm up, okay, cool. Uh, Great hi. outfit, bitch. Thanks, <laughs> let's get the booze out of the way since I'm cosplaying the most hated character in the show. Uh, but anyway, I was, uh, the people demand the, outtakes. So I was wondering what your favorite like deleted scene that we didn't get to see was. Um Oh, there's a really there's a full deleted scene that I really love in the episode where Lucius loses the finger um and he's like going delirious. There's a whole there was a whole other chunk of that arc where they're trying to like sedate Lucius with opium and they give him, they give him way too much and they think they've killed him. It's like a very, and it's, it's like Black Pete like starts mourning and then Lucius like comes back to life and it's like feral and like, and that was so much fun to film except that the, what they used for opium was like vanilla protein powder and it was the most disgusting thing I've ever, <laughs> it's the most disgusting thing I've ever had in my mouth folks, okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, you look amazing. All right, Thank we're gonna you. go over here. Um, hi. I'm Joe. I'm from Milwaukee. Hi, Joe. And hi. hi. Um, I just wanted to ask, like, how do you feel about your characters by the end of the show? Like, do you think that they grown, they like grew enough? Do you think that their arcs ended like properly by the end of the season, ignoring like death? <laughs> like, how do you, how do you think they, like, did you think they grew properly? Uh, I, I, for Izzy, yeah, I do. I, I, I think there's there's levels to him that that weren't there at the start of the show that are there at the end. They're all pretty bad levels, but there's levels. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, it, the, there's, there's room to maneuver there. And that's all I can ask as an actor to finish a show on, a, on that, where it, if we go again, which we are, um, yeah. um, <laughs> then I can continue with that, those, those uh, layers. Yeah, I mean, I loved where Lucius was going. Like, I, you know, that... Into the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was so, I, you know, by the... What a, a fucking treasure. What a treat as an actor to, like, get to play that full arc. Like, Lucius became so, like, self-actualized and, like, powerful. And, like, he was such, like, a bad bitch by the end of the show. Um, and then, yeah, and then just a don't. shame, I guess. <laughs> Thank, Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank hey, you. go ahead. Hi, uh, my name's Reese. Before anybody says anything, I had that before the show. Oh, wow. <laughs> hey, Reese. Hi, Reese. Um, I was wondering, I know how everybody compares Izzy to being the only human in a Muppets movie. Uh, so I was wondering if you guys had any other comparisons that you think is just like that. Mm. I mean, the whole, sh like, Oh, I will say, I mean, I sound like I'm obsessed with Nat Faxon. I just love him so much. Um, but, like, he's, I have always was obsessed with the fact that Nat Faxon was, like, a cartoon character. We were all, it was like Space Jam or something. Like, <laughs> we were all, like, human characters. And then he would come in and be like, beep, 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 beep. like, it was like, <laughs> so I was always very obsessed with, like, him. And the fact that we were all just like, yeah, fine. <laughs> like, it was so good. I mean, I just think he's so funny. So, yeah. I have to say, I mean, I, I got the reference to that and, and, it was kind of like secretly like going, hey, hey, hey. But I, I do think the relationships, particularly between Stephen Blackbeard and, and Lucius and Pete and, and um, Jim and all that, are, are beautifully realized. And, and I think the reference is wrong. Um, it's nice, but it's, there's some beautiful, there's some beautiful human stories being told amongst all the Muppetry. Which, um, which should be applauded as well, because that's great performances.
All right, hi, right over here. Hi. Hi. Uh, hi. My, God, my makeup is running, good Lord. Um, <laughs> that's terrible. Um, hi, my name is Martika. I'm from Palatine, it's a suburb of Chicago. Hello. So, sort of nearby. Um, and I'm sorry, my question is for Khan. I love you too, Nathan, I promise. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, <Okay. there> are... <laughs> so, um, so your costume is actually surprisingly detailed. And so there's so many little things about it that we don't know the backstory behind, like the spade tattoo, which some people say, oh, that's like a sign of a traitor or something. And then the ring that's on um, the tie. I was just wondering if we're ever going to figure out what that is, because I feel like if I ask what the backstory is, you won't tell us. <laughs> OK, firstly, sweaty. <laughs> um, and uh, there is a backstory to the ring, and I'm never going to tell you. Um, purely because I haven't told anyone. And um, I think I told David once, walking down a corridor, and then realized that David was writing a TV show and had other things on his mind other than my mm, wamblings. Wamblings? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, theories about the ring around my neck. The ring was actually given to me um, as uh, one of the last items of the costume and my mum passed at that time and um, so I asked for the sense. ring to be an emerald as opposed to the stone that they had um, because that was her stone. So the ring has quite a profound meaning to me as an actor, to me as a person, but also a very different meaning to, to Izzy. So uh, it, it's quite a profound thing that you all notice the ring. You've made my mum very happy. That is beautiful. I'm so glad you asked. Thank you. Hey guys, so we have like two or three minutes left, so super lightning round, go. Hi, I am Hunter. Uh, my question is, well, we saw you guys uh, do sailing lessons and combat lessons, and I wanted to know. <laughs> Sorry, <yeah>. Bob. <laughs> what was your favorite sort of prep work that you guys did to become pirates? For me, it was the sword stuff. As in life. <laughs> I mean, that sail <laughs> yikes. That, um, that, that sailing day was pretty fun. I mean, I was like cosmically bad at it. Like it was, I, like, I, I actually, imagine how bad you think I was at times by 10, not so bad. Um, but that sailing day was pretty fun. It was so cool, we were on like a working boat. It was like unreal. And we broke it. <laughs> Next question. Hey. Hi, I'm Taylor, I'm Hi, from Taylor. Illinois. I'm wondering um, if Blackbeard were to get rid of his no pet policy, what kind of pet would Lucius and Izzy get if they had to get one? Mm, really good question. A snake. Yeah. <laughs> I've now become obsessed with a snake. Um, I guess like a chinchilla. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Let's go over here. Thank you. Oh. Hi, I'm Zach. Um, Hi, Zach. Super simple question. What was your favorite line that your character said in the show? Mm. Daddy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't fucking know. Um, no, uh, I, I will say, I mean, it's very self-serving because I improvise this line, but I, uh, I really love the wooden legs of sticks line. <laughs> I'm really proud that made it in the cut of the show because I, 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 I was basically like blacked out with stress as I did it. So the fact that it made it in was very cool. Thank you. Hey, go ahead. Hi, I'm Bailey. I'm from Illinois. Yeah. Um, my question is for both, three, both of you. Uh, what was the most difficult part about getting into your characters besides the leather pants? <laughs> um. Oh, just not being able to be fun with the guys, really. Aww. Yeah, I was Little Orphan Annie on that set. Please. And you were horrible, horrible. And the sun didn't come out tomorrow. <laughs> okay, um, I, 
Um, you know what? Actually, funnily enough, very early on, I had a bit of a similar thing because Lucius is, um, he spends a lot of time with Steed in those first couple of episodes, which was great. You know, it was so fun to act with, with, with Reese, but... I kind of felt like the crew were getting to have loads of fun and Lucius was just kind of off like take I was walking around with that fucking book. <laughs> um, so I, it, it took me a couple of weeks to like feel f like for Lucius, I guess, to feel like fully integrated into the, the crew. So yeah. Thank you so much. Hey, fire away over here. Hi. Hi. Uh, my name's Guppy. I'm from Chicago too. Hey. Um, I've been wondering, have you guys, we've talked about this before, have you guys seen like any fan creative content that has just stuck with you, that you've loved it so much? Like fan fiction, fan art, stuff like that? I lose my mind whenever anyone does Lucius drag. <laughs> I love it so much. Where, I mean, where is she? Hi, bitch. I mean, I, 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 whenever anyone does, like, I've seen people do like Lucius, like lip sync performances, like, I've, and people do it as other characters, whether well, they do Blackbeard, they do Izzy, like, I just, I think that's, I mean, obviously I love drag, look at me, do you know what I mean? Um, so I, yeah, that always really, really excites me. And I like, I love the art, and thank you all of you who've given me abs. Thank you so much. Hey, we got three more right over here. Go ahead. You look incredible. Your outfit's amazing. Thank you. Hi, I am Indigo. Um, wow, I just forgot my question. No, I didn't. What, as a person who wants to cosplay Izzy, um, maybe Lucius too, definitely Lucius too, um, what is the best and worst thing about your costume so I'm prepared? <laughs> Best thing is the leather pants. The worst thing is my underpants under the leather pants. It, it took a full team at the end of each day to peel Con out of his costume. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. But while you were there, I will never know. <laughs> I like to help out around set all the different departments and stuff. I just like, I'm one of those lazy actors. Hey, thank you so much. We do have to move on to the next okay. question, all right? Hi, go ahead. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm from Dinard, a okay. town in France. Um, and my question is, when you guys were filming, did you have any inkling of what the public reaction was going to be? And coming from that, of what has been your favorite you know, thing to result from that? I did to an extent. I, 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 uh, an interview that I did kind of did the rounds on Twitter recently, so forgive me for repeating myself, but like, I was I was I'm a child of the internet do you know what I mean like I understand yeah. how like fandom works like mm. I grew, I had like fucking tumblr and twitter <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and it's you'll never find it just <laughs> FYI so stop tweeting me for the link um <laughs> uh but yeah so I I knew that the the show had certain like ingredients and elements that a certain kind of like like a subset of like Twitter and Tumblr users would really enjoy. So I bet I could never anticipate the scale of it. I mean, it was just wild. Calm. I was, um, I, I know a good script because I've, I've done a lot of them and I'm always hopeful that the show's going to land. Mm -hmm. um, I knew the quality it had, the kindness and the love it had was interesting and not usual. Mm -hmm. um, but fuck me, I did not expect you lot. <laughs> uh, and you know what? We are so grateful that you've taken the show on the way you have, because uh, we wanted you to, but we didn't know. And what's happened to We're me? being played off. We, and <laughs> thank you, thank you for doing that. It, it, it means the world. Yeah. Thank There's you one so last much. One last one, one last one. One last question, go. Go, go, go. Hello, I'm Shandra from Chicago. Hey. Hi, babe. Hi. So, we clearly know this is a period piece, and periods end, but as the fans, we don't want it to end, so when do we get gay cowboys? Oh. <laughs> right now. Yeah! <laughs> and with that, we'll wrap it up. Okay. <laughs> No, that would be amazing. Could you imagine if like every like they just kept doing different periods? That'd be that's genius. Okay. Hey guys, one more time, let's hear for Miss Inkfinga and Izzy Khan O'Neill and Nathan Fode, everybody. Mm -hmm.